Club of 34. You, you've got to point at that again. Which one was your yeah. office again? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> but um, you can see the extent of the Brinton factory, because it started, that Slingfield Mill over there, that big building on the right, and the dye house is a bit just below it. Um, and these were all weaving sheds all along here. Uh, that was a weaving shed, that was a machine shop. That was the uh, offices and the laboratory. And that, of course, was the front office. That used to be the Wilton weaving shed years ago, behind there. So there's a huge factory, and went all the way down there. The picking rooms, finishing rooms were down this end. I used to work behind those gates, and we used to have a saying, because uh, my, 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 fa my uh, office was in the middle of the factory and everybody walked past to come up there and I used to stand on the doorstep and shoo them back if they came up too early. And <laughs> but when they got to the gate, uh, those gates were shut and then they were open to let people out for lunch. And this is the latest technology that Brinton's have developed, whereby, it's called the 651, whereby they photograph it, obviously, digitalise it, put it on a chip, put it in the loom, and the loom does the rest. And all you need here is instead of five trays of yarn, all you need is one color, one cheese of each color that's in the design that you're putting on at, uh, in a row at the back of the loom, and that's all you need. You don't need a creel. It's amazing uh, development. That's where I said the yarn went up and the blade gone in. I need going through. Yeah. And you, you can't explain that to someone, can you? No, I no, can't really. It's only a little bit, but it gives you an idea. Yeah. You've got all those hanging down there like that, and each one comes through there and you've got to wait on the bottom. <laughs> yes. Anyway, <coughs> there is one of the first computers, 1890. And it produced, it's done on a card like that. Where you see the, the blank in the card, that's what produces the pattern. When it, when it goes on the loom there, there's a lot of needles. And as it hits the needle, it pushes it back, and up it goes. And that produces a brussel, where the yarn goes over it, and it slides out. That one would give you a cut one, and as you can see, see that little blade in the end there? And I'll show you the blade because people want to know. Those are the blades. Just now, they kept like this to keep them there's one. There's one for you to see. How's that? If I can get it up. How's that? Kidderminster has always been a, a weaving town, weaving in the Middle Ages, cloth, uh, all kinds of cloth, different types of cloth. And it wasn't until a date which we've got, which is 1735, where a method of weaving cloth. Uh, two cloths, one above the other on the same loom at the same time, making a double cloth. And when that was produced, um, the weavers 
for we've got a, a, a new a new thing here. We can market this as floor covering rather than just making cloth. Carpet fitting uh, after World War Two was largely done with uh, 27 inch wide cloth. Uh, I don't suppose you've worked with 27 inch wide cloth at all. Yes, you have. Yeah. Here we've got two illustrations, Kidderminster Stuff, which was a coarse woolen cloth, and this is the cloth which was later developed in 1735, past that round, into a double cloth. And it's such a heavy cloth, it's ideal for something making it to rugs, hand woven on the loom. And that was Kidderminster Stuff. Uh, lovely coarse woolen cloth, goes back, way back. Even to Shakespeare's time, he uh, he bought Kidderminster stuff for the Globe Theatre in uh, in London. William Shakespeare, very labour-intensive job, as you can see. Yeah. Well, ask you a quick question. Sorry, do you mind if I ask you a question? Yeah, ask questions. I know you says you're weaving. Yeah, these plates are alternating direction. That's, That's right. What's the purpose of them? This is producing the particular uh, type of cloth we're weaving, which is yep. a twill. You can see there's a diagonal line running if you look closely. Yep. See that diagonal line? And that is created by the sequence in which these heddle shafts are lifted. Each heddle shaft carries the ends, a share of the ends on the warp. Yep. And there's a little eye for each end. And the order in which they're lifted creates this particular weave. Does that answer your question? Yep. That Selection is made up there by uh, a gadget called a dummy. Uh, it's a, a selector, if you like. It's an early computer, if you like. Now this loom is weaving Kidderminster stuff, a horse wool cloth. And a weaver in Victorian times, he would weave about 25 yards a week to make his living, 25 metres. <coughs> You've got to remember, when she came around, these were the popular design. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Choose a style. Choose a story. Okay. You can choose one of those three designs. Okay, and now you colour it. What you do is you select, select the colour. You have to press the top as well. Okay. So they push the whole thing. Yeah. Touch, touch the top as well. This was Britain's uh, promotion. Uh, they dressed girls up in in in, in, in carpet. And I'll tell you this, the girl didn't move very far. No. <laughs> <laughs> very heavy, heavy, very heavy carpet. And, it's and very, tree feature, Is that the only one there? Yes, the only one there. Mm. The one by Frankie yeah. and Betty's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, now the other thing at which I always draw attention to people when they come around is all the uh, uh, sayings that have come out of the uh, textile trade, not just the carpet trade, but textile trade. Things like spinster. Spinster, yeah. Uh, spin doctor. Spin doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, you would, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and to get fleeced. Uh, that might. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll see why uh, it, it's a, a very labour intensive process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and you know that I was talking about stamping the cards and that. You haven't got any cards on this one. You read off this just the same. Whatever colour comes up there, you alter the bobbins at the back. I hope you're taking note because I'll show you on the machine just now. <laughs> A 
and behind there, there's a lot of hooks that come through, and they'll catch onto those things, and then they'll produce that. They've all been threaded through that tube. Now it's a lady's job. Now you feel the weight of that. Quite a weight, isn't it? Mm. And it goes. <laughs> hey? a, a repeat in the carpet was different. You'd have different number of spools, and obviously a different row of uh, You'd have fewer spools or more. And sellers from Huddersfield would be manufacturers of shearing machines. Mm -hmm. No matter where you went in the world, yeah, yeah, looking at carpet machinery, and I've been in most parts of the world with the carpet machinery, right? you'll get somewhere, and at the end of the line, you'll see a shearing machine, and on the end of it, sellers engineering.